This workspace has three packages, Remix app, footer, and header. And this is its project graph. So as you can see, the Remix app depends on header and footer. This workspace uses Learner, which uses Annex to run tasks. Everything I will show you here will apply to an Annex workspace without Learner as well, right? The commands will look a bit different, but the ideas and the configuration will be the same. Let me build the Remix app. Let me do it again. And as you can see, this time it's very fast, all right? It's cached. Now this is the core feature of Annex. It hashes the relevant source files and other things, right, before running a task to know if such a task has already happened, right? Either on this machine or on another machine. And if it has, it replaces the file outputs and the terminal outputs from cache instead of running the task. How does it know what to hash? So by default, it's conservative. It includes all the sources of the project, right? And all the sources of the project's dependencies. But we can do better than this. So let's open the package, the JSON file, the remix app. In general, if you want to define project specific configuration, right? In a learner workspace powered by Annex, you do it in the package, the JSON of that project, right? Locally to that project. So we can define a property called inputs in that package, the JSON file. And we can, for example, exclude the spec files, right? So now uh, let's run the build several times, right? The first time you know, it builds. Uh, now let's change the production file, right? And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the application has to rebuild. If I change the spec file though, the cache won't be invalidated. The spec file cannot affect the production artifact, cannot affect the build. So I'm going to get a cache kit, right? So that's a good start, but it's insufficient. If I change the footer project, for example, I would like the Remix app to be rebuilt, uh, but it won't work. The footer is no longer an input of the build target, right, of the app. I could list it directly uh, as follows, right? Uh, but that would mean anytime I change my graph, like add, remove dependencies, etc., I would have to reconfigure my input throughout the workspace, right? That might work for this super tiny repo, right? But for any real repo, it just won't work. There is another problem here, which is this globe, right? Will appear on the configuration of every project. So uh, it means that it can get out of sync very easily, right? So it's a maintenance burden. Let's remove the input configuration from this package, the JSON file and configure inputs for all the projects in the next JSON, right? First, I'm going to define two named inputs and you can think of named inputs as basically constant you can refer to. And I'm calling them default and prod. Then I'm going to say that all build targets depend on their prod sources and the prod sources of their dependencies and the caret indicates children dependencies, right? With this in place, let's see if our caching works correctly. First, let's build the app to establish sort of a baseline. Then let's change uh, the production file of uh, the footer package. And as you can see, this invalidated the cache, right? It rebuilt the app. But if I change the footer's uh, package spec, right? The cache doesn't get invalidated, so we get a cache hit. Now let's define similar rules for the test target. Now the test target depends on all the files of the current project, including specs, right? But only on prod files of the dependencies. Okay, first let's run the test target. Because I changed the next JSON, right? Uh, everything is invalidated, all the caches, right? So to make sure we're showing the right thing, let's make sure everything that should be cached is cached, right? So now let's change the spec file of the footer package. And as you can see, uh, the Remix app's test target is, is cached, right? Uh, it wasn't invalidated, which makes sense, right? The spec file of the footer package cannot affect uh, the tests for the app. If I change the prod file of the footer package on the other hand, as you can see, it will invalidate the test target, right? The script will rerun. If I change the spec file of the app itself though, the test will rerun as well. A few extra things worth noting. First, I could redefine the prod named input for say the footer project if the defaults do not work for me. Like if I want to exclude something else, right? The rules defined in next JSON would still apply and would still make sense. Second, the named inputs and inputs contain the same stuff. 
right? So named inputs are used to dry up configuration to make sure that same globs won't appear in multiple places, which is a good thing, right? And they allow you to uh, sort of customize things per project. They add this little of indirection. It can be very handy for larger workspaces where not all projects are the same, right? Third, you can define a dependency on the root of workspace file or files as follows, right? Finally, uh, you can execute the command and feed the result of it into the hasher as follows. And uh, you can do the same with n variables. The flexibility the named inputs provide is handy for non-trivial workspaces, right? For example, you can define a named input called globals and include everything that is global, right, in there and then include that named input into every other named input. And you can do lots of interesting things with that stuff, right? Uh, that's everything regarding inputs in an X and learner. Thank you so much.